Welcome to Hartman Math. This is lesson 4.7, quadratic models. So we're going to see some problems that just have different functions that are probably going to be given to us and we just need to sort of interpret the information that's contained within or that can be accessed within the equations. So we're starting out with the surface of a football field is parabolic in shape so that the rain runs off. This would be common for uh, older grass fields that don't have great drainage because they don't want the, the water just to pool up and make puddles. Uh, where I'm uh, originally from, in very northern California, Eureka, it was real uh, likely that there was going to be a lot of rain during football season. Uh, and so you had to have it, the field crowned is what they would say, to have it run off. Uh, the cross-section of the field is modeled by the equation given here, where x and y are measured in feet. What is the width of the field and the maximum height of the field? So the width, is we're talking about this right here. Well, the equation, what it's giving us is the vertex, because this is vertex form. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So it's giving us the vertex, which is the highest point here, at 80 comma 1.5. It's also giving us the axis of symmetry at 80. So it's 80 feet from one edge to the center. And then another 80 feet to over to here. So if it's 80 feet to the center and another 80 to the other edge, then how far, what's the total width of the field? 160 feet. What's the maximum height? We have that from the vertex, 1.5 feet. So let's write that in terms of sentence. The width is 160 feet, period, and the maximum height is 1.5 feet, period. You try this one, talking about the woodland jumping mouse. It can hop very long distances. Its path here is given by the function y equals negative 2 ninths x times x minus 6. x and y are measured in feet. How far can it jump? How high can it jump? So go ahead and pause here as you think about it. All right, so again, Let's think about what the equation is telling us. Here we're talking about not vertex form, but intercept or factored form. Y equals A times X minus P times X minus Q. So the intercept, so we're talking about the X intercepts, the easy one is right here. Think opposite, six, that's six comma zero. This one here is a little bit harder. Remember, x is the same thing as x minus 0. That's this one at 0. So it goes from 0 to 6. So we just answered the how far question. Now about the how high, which is going to be right here. We want to know the y coordinate. Well, what's, first of all, what's the x coordinate? If this is 0 and that's 6, what's halfway in between that's going to be our axis? three. So as it's jumped three feet, that's when it's going to reach its maximum height. Now what is that maximum height? We're going to have to plug in to get the y. So we're going to plug in a three here and here. So there's our zero and our six, which gives us our axis of symmetry at x equals three. We plug that in, it's equally three times 3 minus 6, 3 minus 6 is negative 3, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, a negative times a negative is a positive, 9 divided by 9 is 1, times the 2, and we're going to get 2. So it can jump 6 feet long and 2 feet high. Example number 2, find the value of x where we know that the area of the triangle is 22. We've got some sort of relationship with the dimensions, base and height. Area for a triangle 
is one half times the base times the height. So we know the area is 22. Let's start there and substitute there. We can replace B with 3x minus 1. Use parentheses. We can replace H with X. Now, I don't really like the half, and we are solving, so to undo the half, I'm going to choose to multiply by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that half. And then I think I can just probably distribute the x from there. And we probably want to get this equal to 0. So let's subtract 44, make sure it's in the correct order. We can do the quadratic formula, but I think this might be factorable. So let's try to factor that. Let's double bubble. 3x squared would be 3x in the front and x in the front. And then thinking of negative 44 might be negative 44 or positive 1. Positive 2, negative 22. Positive 4, negative 11. Something like that. Turns out that the correct factoring is going to be 3x plus 11, x minus 4. Let's check that for a moment. Outside, we get negative 12x plus 11x. That's minus 1x for the middle. So if we now set these both, these both of these factors equal to 0, solve for x. So 3x plus 11 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0. We would add, uh, subtract 11 on both sides, divide by 3, so x would be negative 11 thirds. I don't think that's really possible. You can't have a height of negative 11 thirds. You can't have a height that's negative at all. So we can throw that one away, solve this one. We're going to get x equals 4. That's our solution. Example number three, codes require buildings to be able to withstand some wind pressure. That pressure from the wind is blowing at S miles per hour is given by the equation pressure is equal to 0 0.00256 times S squared, where again, S is our speed of the wind. If you are designing a two-story library, it must be able to withstand 20 pounds per square foot of pressure. What is the limit of the wind speed? So we're going to take our equation and say, well, where would we put the 20? Again, since we're talking about pounds per square foot, that's a pressure. That's a P. So 20 goes here. Now we're going to solve for S. So the first thing is we want to get rid of this number. Since that's multiplication going on, we'll divide both sides by that. Don't do it in your calculator yet. We'll just leave it as a fraction. And then since this is S squared, we're going to square root both sides. We're doing the square root method. So square root both sides. Now we can type that into a calculator. We're talking about this being speed, so our units are going to be miles per hour. And it's pretty common maybe to round to one decimal. So if we do that, it would be 88.4 miles per hour. Let's say if we're talking about the same problem, if we wanted to withstand 40 pounds per square foot, so twice as much, what about the wind speed? Is the wind speed going to be also twice as much? Well, let's see. So now our pressure is 40, we can put a 40 there. Same exact process for solving. We'll divide by 0 0.00256. We'll square root both sides. We can put that into a calculator. It goes up, but it's not twice as much. It's because of the square root. It's actually the square root of two times as much, and it's about 125 uh, miles per hour. So one thing to think about compared to the previous one, which could withstand 20, uh, needed to withstand 20, and maybe that would be good for an area like Elk Grove, but let's say our library was in Florida. Maybe in Florida it needs to be 125. Why would it only need to be 
20 pounds per square foot in Elk Grove, but 40 in Florida. What would be the reason? Winds might get stronger in Florida due to hurricanes. We also might be talking about, if we're talking about something like Oklahoma or Texas, it might be uh, tornadoes, things like that, where the th buildings have to be designed to withstand that. That's it for today. See you next time.